Welcome to this video for the fourth Sunday of Lent. Before we get started, I just wanted to bring to your attention one more time a special event that we are looking forward to on Tuesday, March 30th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We will be having an interfaith discussion with Rabbi Ron Schulman, with Reverend Paige Blair, and myself about some of the lessons that we've learned from our various faith traditions during this COVID-19 time. It will be a one-hour discussion, and there'll be some breakout rooms for you to gather with folks from the other communities in a smaller setting. I hope you'll join us for this, and please RSVP to either myself or Bronwyn, and we will send out the Zoom link. May we now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Here ends the reading. What you're about to hear and see is a collaboration between art and music. What you will hear is a rendition of a piece for string quartet titled Lyric Suite, from 1925, composed by Austrian composer Albin Johannes Berg. What you are about to see is a series of paintings, also titled Lyric Suite, by American abstract expressionist painter Robert Motherwell. In 1965, Motherwell found himself in a Japanese store searching for a toy as a gift for a friend's child. Instead of finding what he was looking for that day, he ended up going home with 1,000 sheets of Japanese rice paper. He decided that he would lay these sheets of paper on the floor of his studio and that he would apply ink in a fast and sweeping motion, all while listening to Berg's string quartet piece, Lyric Suite. He decided right there and then that he would paint with no correction, with no conscious thought, in a pure experiment of automism. I hope you enjoy.
there's something very interesting about the marriage of these paintings with the music. Robert Motherwell was a rather interesting artist. He was born in Aberdeen, Washington, but he grew up in San Francisco because his father took a job as being president of Wells Fargo Bank. Because he had such a severe asthma, the Pacific Northwest and coastal California was difficult for him, so he spent a lot of time in the California desert. Later on, he would marry Helen Frankenthaler, who you might remember as one of the artists who I featured last year at the very start of our at-home worship experience. I also really like Motherwell because of the way in which he used intellect in the way that he talked about his painting. Motherwell actually studied for a PhD in philosophy at Harvard, and because of this, the way in which he talks about his work is really rooted in academic principles and some very rigorous thought. And I think that is what I really appreciate about him, is the way in which he not only used music in his work, but also philosophical and psychological ideas as well. Motherwell always wanted to be a painter and really didn't want to be an academic, but he pursued doctoral studies at Harvard after he agreed with his father, who was worried that painting wasn't the most practical career, that if he was to go to Harvard and pursue a PhD and have something to fall back on, his father would give him an allowance of $50 a week for the rest of his life. One of Motherwell's most famous series of paintings is titled Elegy to the Spanish Republic. During the Spanish Civil War, Motherwell felt deeply a sense of pain for the people of Spain. Tragic human events such as this really weighed heavily on Motherwell, and these emotions and these feelings that he experienced became a large influence on his visual vocabulary and through the work that he produced. I've included here a few images of some works from this particular series, and I think it's important that you see them in the gallery space, that you see them on the wall, because their monumentality is an important part of their overall impact. They're very, very simple, but at the same time, they're very elegant and they carry a lot of weight to them. I also really like Motherwell because Latin America played a very significant part in his journey. He spent a significant amount of time in Mexico working with Latin American artists. One in particular, a Chilean artist by the name of Roberto Mata, taught Motherwell this concept of automatism. Automatism was the process that many surrealists used to tap into their unconscious thought. The concept had a lasting effect on Motherwell, and it prompted his further investigation and study of this school of thought. In automatism, one paints in such a way that there is no deeper thought to the gesture and to the action. Rather, the music or the emotion or the feeling is what comes to the surface and inspires a particular gesture, a particular color choice, or a particular action. And this is something that is really a hallmark of Motherwell's take on abstract expressionism. Motherwell, when he purchased these 1,000 sheets of Japanese rice paper, was not only having the opportunity to explore a new medium that he previously had never worked with, but he also had the opportunity to explore automatism in a way that allowed him to produce some images that are to this day very compelling and very interesting when viewed alongside the music that inspired them. The reason that I wanted to share Motherwell with you and 
why I enjoy sharing so many different abstract expressionists with you is because this is the art that was contemporary to the time when the United Church of Christ was in formation. A lot of the concerns that shape abstract expressionist art were the same concerns that shaped the formation of the United Church of Christ. In a post-war era, there was a concern over unity, over ecumenism, over working with other people of different thoughts, of taking a deep look at science and the developments that were being made in science and technology and working those into an intellectually rich and informed faith. The abstract expressionists were people of deep intellect that were asking really deep and important questions in light of what was a catastrophic war, a war that forced them to reevaluate some critical questions about the essence of life and what is important and about the power that humans have to both destroy but also to build and to come together. The abstract expressionists were engaged in these conversations at a very critical time when the country and the world were just beginning to heal. At the same time, the United Church of Christ was continuing to embrace a intellectually deep and rigorous faith that embraced the various aspects of humanity and allowed people the freedom to question and to doubt and to bring those questions and those doubts to the table as an important part of a reasoned faith. I think that what we believe and the art of abstract expressionism really go hand in hand. Motherwell was interested in the subconscious of the things that we carry with us that we are not always fully aware of, of that which is not on the surface but that needs to be investigated deeper. Motherwell wanted to pull back the layers of humanity and to get to the essence of painting in emotion in its purest form. As we continue to walk our way through the Lenten season, peeling back the layers is really what this season is all about. It's about looking deeper. It's about introspection. It's about acknowledging and making peace with these various complex sides of our own nature, about understanding the ways in which we sometimes fall short, but also holding a great thankfulness for the ways that we are able to do great things, the ways that we are able to proclaim resurrection. But before we can get to that point, we must also contend with Good Friday, And we must contend with the truth that we would be in that crowd with Jesus before us, not recognizing the light that was there all along. We are in the fullness of our humanity, both sinners and saints, almost simultaneously. And as we continue to journey through Lent, our second distanced Lent, ever since we began worshiping at home. We do so with our eye to the future, a future where we recognize the light whenever it comes before us, where we proclaim the risen Savior, where we acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and know that God loves us more than we could ever imagine. Motherwell's paintings and many paintings and works of art from all of the artists that I have shared with you, for me, are a testament. They are a a testimony of God. And in Motherwell's case, the fact that even in automatism, in the unconscious thought, in gestural movements, that something beautiful can be born of that. That something beautiful can be born that is within us and that always has been in us. Something that was given to us by our creator when we were knit together. And that something that is the very essence of us that is always there. That each of us 
have the potential to create something that is indeed beautiful and sacred and holy, and the world is waiting to see it. May it be so. Amen.